Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to talk about clogged drains, and we'd like to thank Eric Peterson for liking and sharing the podcast. And I just finished reading the chapter about lamp repair in our upcoming ebook. How was it? It was good. I like how you added one of my drawings for how to create an underwriter's knot. So reason enough to purchase our next book. (laughs) In ancient Rome, around 600 BC, they built a large sewer system using stone and brick, and they created an arch ceiling above it so buildings and streets could be built on top of it. And parts of that sewer system are still being used today. Outrageous. It is crazy. And Pliny the Elder wrote about it. Of course he did. In the U.S., in the 1800s, drain pipes were made out of hollowed-out logs, or wood pipes were made out of beveled boards that were banded together like whiskey barrels. Mm. And early homes had clay pipe, fiber conduit, cast iron, or concrete drain pipes. And plastic drain pipe is popular now because it's much better at keeping out tree roots so you don't get a clog. The state of Colorado Water and Sanitation says one of the biggest problems for your kitchen drains are cooking grease and coffee grounds. And they're saying, don't use your kitchen sink like a garbage can. Mm -hmm. You should be using strainers to catch small food particles that can collect in your drain pipes and build up. And that will slow or clog your drain lines. And don't throw coffee grounds into the sink. They don't break down easily in water and they clump together. And then when grease and oils attach to the grounds, they can grow into a mass that will slow or clog your drains. That's crazy. They're saying throw all coffee grounds into the trash or put it into a compost pile. Hmm. The New York Department of Environment and Planning Fog Program. The what? The Fog Program. So fats, oils, and grease. So you weren't going to explain that? (laughs) Does everybody should know what the Fog Program is? Well, the fog program says don't dump fats, oils, and grease down sanitary drains because over time they stick to the drain lines and it can cause clogged drains and odor. They say throw meat fats, food scraps, lard, shortening, baking goods, butter, margarine, cooking oil, sauces, dairy products, and salad dressings into the trash because they're also saying don't use your drain like a garbage can. Hmm. As the fats, oils, and grease collect inside the drain pipes, it can block your water flow, causing your sink, dishwasher, or floor drains to back up. Hmm. The FOG program recommends pouring cooking oil and grease into cans or bottles and allow it to harden and then dispose of it in the trash. Scrape all food scraps from cookware and plates into the trash. And then wipe off oil and grease from pans, pots, and plates with paper towels and then, a lot of peas in and, <laughs> and then throw that in the trash. And use strainers in kitchen sinks to catch any food particles. They're saying don't use a garbage disposal for any fatty or oily food. Their motto is scrape it, don't grind it. Mm. Because excess use of garbage disposals for oily food causes clogs. What should you use a garbage disposal for? Everything except oily foods. <laughs> <laughs> I took some training from Insincorator a few years ago. I know. They make garbage disposals. I know that too. They they say never put fats, oils, or grease into a garbage disposal. And when you're grinding food scraps, only use cold water. And that helps keep the fats in food solid so it passes through the drain without sticking. Hmm. They're saying coffee grounds and eggshells can cause a clog if you try to grind too much at a time. They recommended avoid putting them down the drain, but if you do plan on using your disposal, use the strongest flow of cold water and slowly feed it into the disposal. If you get a clog in your disposer, you can use the wrench that comes with it or a quarter inch hex wrench. You're gonna turn off the electric to the unit and there's a hole in the bottom and now you're going to turn the unit back and forth using that wrench and that will break up a clog so that it'll spin. Where should you keep the wrench? I would tape it on the inside of the cabinet or tape it to the unit. Well, I think that's a good tip because otherwise you're going to lose it. Right. Because <laughs> right. how often are you going to use it? Right. K 
Kansas State University says use strainers in all sinks and don't put fats, oils, or grease down your drains. You can pour boiling water down your kitchen drain weekly and that helps melt and move fats down the drain. They suggest using vinegar and baking soda to help break down fats like a and reduce odor. Yeah, exactly. So pour a half a cup of baking soda over the drain and then pour a half a cup of white vinegar over the baking soda so it washes down the drain and then cover the drain immediately. <laughs> After a few minutes, pour a pot of boiling water down the drain and the combination of baking soda and vinegar helps break down fatty acids into soap and glycerin, mm -hmm. and that helps reduce the buildup in your drains. They suggest repeating this weekly to keep your drains open. Cornell University says pour one cup of baking soda and a half a cup of salt down your drain, and then flush this with boiling water. This is going to cause a chemical reaction to break down the buildup on your drain pipes. They suggest doing this routinely. Another recipe is a half a cup of baking soda, a quarter cup of salt, and then flush it with one to two cups of hot vinegar, cover your drain, let it set 15 minutes, and then flush it with hot or boiling water. I read a couple blogs with people who did some testing with these recipes, and they found that the hot liquid is the key part of the recipe. Right. So they're saying boiling water and a small amount of dishwashing detergent worked as well as these formulas from their tests. And you don't need to use a half a cup of salt? That seems <laughs> right. like a lot, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. If your kitchen sink is starting to drain slower, you can, time to move. It, you, can, you can remove the trap to check if there's a buildup there. So put a bucket underneath the trap before you remove it because that trap is holding water and that prevents sewer gas from getting into your home. Mm -hmm. If you have standing water and you don't want to remove the trap, you can try a cup plunger. If you have a double sink, you'd cover one drain opening with a wet rag and have someone hold it and then plunge the other drain opening. And if there's a buildup of food, coffee grounds, and other debris, generally you can push it out of the trap with a plunger. Okay. If a plunger doesn't help, or when you remove the trap, there's not a clog there, you can use a drain auger to break loose a clog that's in the drain pipe behind the wall. So you'd remove the trap and wall tube and rod into that main pipe that's coming out of the wall. And a hand auger or a drum auger that can be attached to a drill is pretty easy to use, and it'll break up food and grease that accumulates to cause a clog. I like the drum augers rather than that coil of wire that comes with a handle because it's much easier to use and store. Right, me too. And it's a good basic tool to have rather than depending on chemical drain openers that are either an acid or a base because they can cause severe burns if they get on your skin. And you never want to pour that type of drain opener, whether it's an acid or a base, into a garbage disposal because it can damage it. Mm -hmm. And they can also have reactions with other chemicals. So if you pour an acid drain opener into a sink and it mixes with bleach, or you had bleach in your sink first, it creates a toxic gas. Acid drain openers mixed with a base drain opener create a toxic gas. In my local paper, there was an article about a father who was using a cleaner with bleach on his kitchen sink, and his sink got clogged while he was using this. So he used a base drain opener, and it wouldn't unclog. So he ran to the store, and he got something stronger. So he purchased an acid drain opener and poured it into the sink. And when his son came downstairs, I guess he had collapsed on the floor, they called 911 because he had asthma. They just thought it was an asthma attack. Mm -hmm. So the paramedics came, they worked on him in the house, and then the wife and the son got sick, and they took them all out. The son and the wife had to be hospitalized. Five paramedics and a student paramedic were hospitalized from inhaling the fumes while they were working on this gentleman, and he actually passed away at the hospital just from mixing these chemicals together. Wow, that's a terrible story. Yeah, yeah. So amazing how dangerous some of these chemicals can be in the reaction. Right. And some other combinations that are dangerous are rubbing alcohol and bleach. It produces a toxic gas. Ammonia and bleach or vinegar and bleach. And a good rule of thumb is only mix bleach with water, no other chemicals. Right. Bacterial drain openers and enzyme drain cleaners are effective if you use them regularly to keep fats, grease, and food particles from building up in your drains. 
If you use acids or bases, it'll cut a groove on the bottom of your drain pipe, but a lot of that buildup is still left inside the drain. Right. By using a bacterial drain cleaner, the bacteria will break down the buildup all around the pipe. And because it eats it. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And if you use it regularly, you'll get much better water flow, and it's safe to use, especially if you have a septic system. Right. The company Unique, it's U-N-I-Q-U-E, they have a bacteria and enzyme formula called Super Digested Safe Drain Opener. And their drain opener is non-toxic and safe to use around kids and pets. Robic, it's R-O-E-B-I-C. They have a product called Garbage Disposal Cleaner and Deodorizer. This uses bacteria to break down fats, grease, and food particles. And it has a surfactant that cleans and degreases the surfaces that it comes in contact with. Uh There's a company called Drainbow. It's D-R-A-I-N-B-O. They have a product called Household Drain Treatment and Cleaner. It uses microbes, and this is certified by the Natural Products Association and the USDA as a bio-based product. Hmm. In bathroom sink drains, body oils, dirt, hair, soap, lotions, toothpaste, and shaving cream can... Are you just listing stuff? (laughs) So this stuff can build up to slow or clog your drain. And depending on the type of stopper you have, hair and debris can build up on the body of the stopper or that rod that's below the stopper that lifts it up and closes it. Mm -hmm. So by removing your stopper and using a wire or a drain cleaning tool, you can usually clear out a clog. And you can remove the nut that holds the lift rod and pull out the rod, and that will release the stopper if it's attached because the stopper can either be attached to that rod or be sitting on top of it. Right. If it's still clogged after cleaning the stopper, you can use a cup plunger, and if you have an overflow, you'd want to cover that with a wet rag. You can use a wet dry vac in the drain and cover the overflow with a wet rag. You can also remove the trap and check that, and I'd put a bucket underneath when I'm taking it off because it's going to be filled with water. Mm Mm-hmm. Or you can use a drain auger if there's nothing in the trap. So you'd remove the trap, the wall tube, and rod into that pipe that's coming out of the wall. And then if you use a bacteria or enzyme drain opener once a month, it'll help keep it draining well. So like at night, right? Have it sit overnight? Yeah, smart. In fact, uh, I would read the label because some of the bacteria drain openers and cleaners They want you to warm up the pipes. They don't want you to use hot water because it can kill the bacteria, but they want you to use warm water so it kind of wakes up the bacteria and then let it set for a few hours so that it'll actually get into whatever the clog is. A lot of times it just builds up these oils and proteins from our body or skin. They call it a biofilm, and the bacteria will get into that and just start eating it. And as they reproduce, they create... They need time to work. This right. isn't going to be a quick fix. Right, exactly. And, so yeah, that's why it's good as a maintenance tool. Right, they're microscopic, so it's, it's a slow right. process. And they die over time, mm-hmm. so you're adding this monthly so it slowly breaks down. But it, it's amazing what a nice job they do, mm-hmm. and it's safe. Laundry tub clogs are generally caused from lint from your washing machine or pet hair if you clean your pet in the tub. Mm-hmm. So you want to cover your drain tube from your washing machine with a washing machine lint trap and check that routinely. And then cover the drain opening with a screen. I saw a couple of interesting strainers at a hardware show I was just at. One is called the Sink Shroom. It's S-I-N-K, capital S-H-R-O-O-M. And this is a strainer for bathroom sinks. And it has adapters, so you can put this in one inch inch and a quarter, and inch and a half drains. It allows water to flow, but it catches hair and any other large particles. And they also have the tub shroom, so you can put this in tubs and showers to catch hair. Hmm. And if you have a slow draining or clogged shower or bathtub, it's generally hair, because you've got soap and dirt that builds up, but the hair generally gets caught on those crossbars at the drain and builds up. So you can use a hair removal tool. A couple popular ones are Zip It. So this is a plastic strip with little hooks or little barbs all along it. Mm -hmm. And you push this in and pull it out and it grabs the hair. And if you've seen any of the videos on YouTube, it's amazing what it pulls out of the drain. There's also a product called the Drain Weasel. It has Velcro-like hooks all along the edge of this. 
so you push it in and pull it out and it grabs hair. Once you've tried a hair removal tool, if it's still slow or clogged, you can use a cup plunger. In a bathtub, you'd want to cover the overflow with a wet rag while you're plunging it. And also in a bathtub or a shower, a wet dry vac does a nice job. In a tub, you'd want Why to... Why do you sound surprised? <laughs> it's, it's cool. It's amazing how effective it is. And in a bathtub, you'd want to cover the overflow with a wet rag. If you have access to the trap, you can remove it to see if there's a clog there. Otherwise, you can use a drain auger and go past it. If you have a shower or a tub and you don't have access to the trap and a shower, generally you can remove the strainer and you can use an auger straight down into the drain. For a bathtub, you would remove the overflow and then you can use an auger down through that pipe. Okay. If you have a clog in a toilet, primarily it's too much toilet paper. So you can use a plunger with a flange so it seats around the opening of the bowl. If you have an older toilet, it's going to have a circular opening. So any toilet plunger with a flange is going to work well because it'll seat in it. Mm -hmm. And a plumber told me years ago, you should add a little dishwashing detergent to the water and let it set for a few minutes before you use a plunger. And that'll help the clog slide through the trap easier. If you have a high efficiency toilet, so 1.28 gallons per flush or less, they have a variety of shapes, the opening in the bowl. Right. So most plungers will not seal in these openings in a high efficiency toilet. So there's a plunger from Corky, Corky is K-O-R-K-Y. It's for high efficiency toilets. It's called the Beehive Max and it has a flexible design, it will shape itself to the opening to create a seal. And what's great about this is it works with high efficiency toilets and it works with old toilets. So it's kind of goof proof. <laughs> and when I was at the shroom booth at the hardware show, they have a toilet shroom. So it's a cone shaped flange that you push and pull in a toilet bowl and it unclogs a clog. Does it look like a mushroom, too? Yes, it's pretty cool. <laughs> if you have an older toilet with a large tank and you have a clog with a lot of waste and paper, that, that large amount of water sometimes jams paper and waste into the trap, and so it's very hard to plunge it, you can use a toilet auger. So this has a rubber or plastic covered section. It'll protect the toilet bowl from getting scratched and you push this rod into the trap and you slowly turn it and it will work its way through any toilet paper waste and then you pull it out and now you can plunge it very easily and unclog a toilet. Right. The city of River Falls, Wisconsin says don't use wet wipes. They don't break down fast enough. Only use standard toilet paper. Wet wipes, when they combine with fat, grease, and dirt, they create huge clogs in the pipes and drains in your home and in the city sewer systems. They're saying wet wipes also easily get tangled in tree roots in the main drain and it causes a clog and potentially it can back up sewage into your home. Yuck. And they say don't use wet wipes if you have a septic system. Mm -hmm. And one of the problems with these new high efficiency toilets if you're using wet wipes is there's not enough water volume to push this easily down your main drain and into the sewer system. Right. The city of New York said they've spent 18 million dollars over five years to deal with wipes clogging up wastewater systems and there was an article in Charleston, South Carolina saying that they've removed thousands of pounds of disposable wipes that have accumulated and clogged a series of large pumps, and it took them three days to clear the pipes. Huh. Do you have anything else to add? After this week's research, I've decided not to use my drains as a trash can <laughs> and not to use wet wipes. There you go. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, CastBox, or your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our ebooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, books 1 through 10, and soon book 11 on Amazon. 
If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. And you can follow us on Instagram, Fix It Home Improvement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Do you